Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tabor Talk. So happy Mother's Day, beautiful day here in the Catskills. So I am a big Lex Friedman fan. I've listened to every single one of his podcasts. I think he's a very talented, smart, interesting guy who has access to all these incredible guests. Like, the, I'm telling you, probably the best out there, right? Like any, everyone from Elon Musk to all these incredible scientists, some of the most brilliant minds, right? And there's even talk that he's going to interview Vladimir Putin, on and on and on. But I'll tell you, he could be a bit cringy. And some of his guests, like, like Andrew Huberman, who's a neuroscientist, one of his more recent guests, really good guy. But I'm telling you for like, like, for an hour, all they were doing was just like kissing each other's ass, like how great you are. And if you look at the comments, it's so, oh, it's so cringy. So let me show you this. Um, this person has the same feeling as I do. The Agostino Zynga show, he's really good. Um, wow, he's got 14,000 subscribers now. He has a podcast called The Random Show. Check it out. So glad this, have you guys seen this tweet? And I want to just pose a question to everybody here in the chat. I want to find out what you guys think. So, the tweet on screen is from Lex Friedman. And this tweet, I guess, was in relation to the news that got confirmed that Elon Musk secured his acquisition of Twitter, right? 47 something billion dollars. Um, he's, you know, talking about making it a, um, a bastion of free speech. And he basically likened Twitter to the public town square and everyone should have a say something and there should be no such thing as banning and whatnot. Um, both sides should be able to talk, you know, the, 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 the old um, intellectual dark web talking points, right, about free speech and about people being able to say dangerous or hurtful things in order to get to the truth. We know that spiel. The funny thing about this whole thing is that as a kind of consequence, it has kind of opened up Elon Musk to a lot of criticism from people, which I think is maybe a little bit, you know, it's probably pointed at the wrong person. I don't think he's as evil as somebody like as a Jeff Bezos, but I also don't think he's entirely altruistic as some of his fanboys like to make you think, I know. like to okay. lead you to believe. But in general, it's a bit of, you know, it is what it is news. Um, after a week, it kind of passes, and after you start to realize that it's not your company, just move on. But this Lex Friedman character, I don't know, man. I'm not sure how to read him because I remember making a clip about this for my podcast. I spoke about it a little bit and I said from the outset, I've always been a fan of Lex Friedman. I think I was a fan of him when Me he too. first appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast. And I think he's mentioned how he was, you know, um, at MIT and how he didn't really have much money and he was eating, you know, just the patties from the McDonald's. This is true story. So keep himself Joe Rogan made it. And do the whole carnival diet that way on the cheap, blah, 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 blah. And then over time, he absolutely blew up right to the point now where he's like you know making i would imagine a really good income off of that podcast that he does he also has access to some of that way on the cheap blah 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 and then over time he absolutely blew up right to the point now where he's like you know making i would imagine a really good income off of that podcast that he does he also has access to some amazing people and all that good stuff so you know but he's also kind of you know in the asset in, in the kind of Pro, yeah, process or along his journey of kind of making it he has revealed some really corny corny yeah. things about his personality like this sort of stuff where he's like you don't get me wrong he's a big fan of Elon Musk which makes sense because he's a fan of um what's that shit he does oh with the robots AI right it's an AI guy robot um, so obviously you know if you're if you're an AI freak Elon Musk is definitely going to be your North Star as Brenda would say but this sort of stuff just makes me all a bath and mm -hmm. it's so cringe. But it doesn't even make sense. on the other sense. side of it, I think to myself, am I the hater? Am I the person who's unable to do this because I've got too much pride or I've got too much, um, what do you call it? Uh, I'm way too self-aware in one, in one way. I've got way too much pride and I also don't know how to give people props when needed because this tweet i think is wild to me this makes my skin crawl i, I would never do this and the tweet is as follows this tweet is my official job application to twitter for the position of chief love officer clo i request a monthly salary of 69 dollars preferably paid in crypto in return i will try my best to be useful and to do what i can to increase the amount of love in this world like huh what does that even mean 
this is the same guy who was talking about sitting down and doing a podcast with Vladimir Putin and the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, in order to kind of heal them yeah. and to stop the war. Like, what? I know. Like, this overinflated sense of self, I think, is absolutely insane. Oh, there you go. I mean, I totally agree. Like, this overinflated sense of self it's just so weird so if you watch his podcasts they're really good by the way um but the the beginning of each taping he talks and all he cares about like it's like like he's like oh, i will do a better job and like he it, it's just like all ego it's like a really strange thing it's like no one really cares about how you're feeling we just want to see a good podcast like i don't know where this comes from another annoying thing about him is that he he, he tries to be like joe joe rogan so lately he's like all these sort of jokes and he's not bad he's sometimes funny dry humor but it's so obvious he's trying to be a stand-up comedian and it's so fucking weird so anyway I'll be doing more on Lex Friedman. I really like him a lot. I'm glad, glad he's around, but, you know, I don't know what that is. Is he immature? Or who, who knows? So, all right. Good friends, good books, and a sleepy conscience. A peace, love, and understanding here on Tabor Talk. Mm -hmm.